Good morning, everyone. It's Maggie here with our vlog. Um, I wanted to show you guys some of the cool stuff I've been playing lately. I'm not going to show you any of the stuff I didn't care for today, but I may do that soon because I'm more sad about it than anything because so many of my friends, like, they're enjoying Scoville a lot and I didn't like it and I wanted to, so I'm a little sad about that. But I'll show you some of the cool stuff because I haven't talked to you guys in so long that I figure I'll just show you some neat stuff first. Um, first things first, new purse game, Linko. Uh, this is uh, a Bluxen in Germany. And this is uh, like a trick-taking, clamming type game. Not trick-taking, but um, I don't know. It's it's cool, cute little card game. And um, the basic idea is that you want to get the cards out of your hand. So each turn you can play any number of the same value of cards. So you can play two twos or four fours or uh, one single five or whatever you want. And then you're going to go around the table, and everyone else is going to play some cards. They can play as many of them as they want. If they play the same number of cards but a higher value card than you, they can either take your cards, put them in their hand, or they can ask you to either pick them up or discard them. If cards are still in front of you when your turn comes back round, you get to bank them as points. So if I had three threes and nothing happened to them, they go to my points pile. The game ends when someone runs out of cards. You count the points in your points pile minus the cards left in your hand. So, really fun, simple, cute game. Been playing it a lot. Most people I play it with loves it. Uh, Brian doesn't like it, but he doesn't like anything that, that is that high in luck. So, it, I would totally pick it up. I found it on the Ravensburger website. They're not... Um, unfortunately, they're not available at the moment to order into my store, but you can get it on the Ravensburger website for like 20 bucks. So, uh, totally worth that. Um, and then I haven't played it yet, but I'll just show you guys because we did the task got here yesterday. So, um, this was the little card game. It was on Kickstarter. Um, Philip DuBerry and Jason Katarski. Um, these guys started a new game company called Green Couch Games, and this was their first uh, produced title. Um, I'm sure now that Fidelitas is out and it's hitting stores any day now that they will start their next Kickstarter project really soon. Um, I'm excited to play that one and it's got great art from a woman which is cool so I'm excited to play that. Um, next is a Kickstarter that I got Aquas here. Uh, this is a stuff and fell that they, was, they released for um, Essen and such last year and then when they brought it to the States, Tasty Minstrel kickstarted a number of copies of it. Um, those are just now starting to get around to everyone. Um, I've played it six times now, and I love it. I do. It's a great game. We've had some issues, though. So in the game, you have um, you know, your home lab, and it can be upgraded. You have robots you can put out, and you have submarines you can build. and we have found that the way that the scoring works makes it where competing in building out your lab with all of its letters and completing it is worth more points than anything else possible in the game. So if you're not doing that, it's very, very difficult to win. Um, it's the only thing in the game that has a nonlinear point scale. So the more pieces you add to the lab that are unique, the more points you make from them. And it's often much better than anything else in the game to to upgrade your lab. Uh, I'm kind of sad about it, honestly, because it just means that the games are just a little less uh, open and fun than the others, uh, especially Steffenfeld games. Uh, people have compared Aquasphere to Luna a lot, and have played a lot of Luna. Um, I would say that Luna doesn't have that particular problem, though. Um, I can see it kind of interlaced actions you kind of uh, you're building up one action or another trying to get something accomplished um, aquasphere is a little more limited uh, limiting uh, it's hard to get what you want done and in a timely manner and still retain area control and not lose too many points to octopods and um, it's it's a fun challenging interactive game which is very good um, and much better at three or four players than at two a two player just it's not as fun because you're not having to deal with other people. You're dealing with kind of neutral stuff and you stay on opposite sides of the sphere and you're fine. Um, 
again, I'll probably play a few more games of it and then put it away for a little while, bring it back out in a year. Uh, it feels a little like Russian Railroads that way, where there there's kind of a an ideal scenario and there's nothing much you can do about it. Um, and the last one, which we haven't broken, <laughs> yay, is the Stouffer Dynasty, which is uh, D. Stouffer in Germany. Um, this one got picked up by Z-Man out here. Um, but it's really neat. It's a Hans and Gluck. Uh, it's by Andreas Stedding. And so this is your kind of board with all the different provinces on it and your uh, entourage following around a king. Um, so each round you're trying to score certain areas. But you can only build wherever the king is for free. After that, you have to start paying extra noblemen to move away and get to whatever province you're trying to get to. Um, this one has two aspects that are kind of... You, you're hearing about them a lot in, the, in all the reviews. So um, at the beginning of the game, you're dealt three cards. Um, there are three different types. There's one province, one pattern, and uh, a special... Uh, you get points for blah, blah, blah. Those are the cards that people tend to not like. Um, the the one with the pattern is where you have to have guys left over at the end of the game. And I've seen this pattern work a lot for me, and I've seen it not do so great. Uh, it depends on where the king is and where you are and how the game worked and what card bonuses were available. So um, there's a lot of points hidden in those cards, and that's what people are not enjoying as much. Um, and then the other part that I don't hear about is the, the initial card setup. So there are these bonus cards that you can get during the game. You get these you get chips, and every time you get the second chip, you can get a card. And the bonus cards really make or break a game. If you get a bad mix, it's just um, they're going to feed strategies, and they're going to help you, and they're going to really determine what you can or can't do during the game. And so... I would say the mix of those cards is really what can kind of hamper you from success, um, which is nice because it hampers the whole table, but it's also really fun to play a, a, a game uh, of Stouffer Dynasty with all of the resources ever. Um, some of the card mixes give you lots of points or lots of stuff, lots of guys, um, so it's, it's, it's pretty fun to play the different versions of the same game when it's not a very high randomness game. It feels really neat how different it can be from one to another. Uh, so that was that was cool. And uh, last but not least, I played uh, The Fields of Arla last night uh, for the first time, and that's a great game. Man, is that cool. There's so much going on and so many decisions, and you kind of it's kind of like Caverna where there's a bunch of tiles and you're picking a few of them to kind of go for. Um, I... I have had access to Fields of Arla for four months now and have only played it once, so it really means I, I'm not going to be buying it. I don't play one or two player games that often, um, and it's a shame because the game is so cool. So uh, if you have a moment to check out a new Juve Rosenberg game, um, the Fields of Arla is definitely cool and worth your time. Uh, Juve also made Patchwork this year, which is a clever little two-player. If you want something light and silly and wonderful, and you can play it with kids, there's a, like it's a patchwork. Um, and it's a two-player quilting game. You're kind of building up a quilt uh, with tiles, and it's just neat and fun. It's got the Glenmore movement mecha mechanism, uh, so that was that was cool. Uh, and last but not least, I'll show you guys. Um, so later today I have to do something that I am not good at and I do not enjoy, and that is trading magic cards. It is a trading card game, but no one no one told me. I usually am lazy and buy what I need from the store that I work at, and today I'm going to go in and you have to you kind of present this binder and you're kind of like showing them all the cards you have. And they pick out cards and they ask you what dollar amount those are worth to you and then you say the dollar amount and then you have to pick out their cards and ask what they want to value them at and you try and find a somewhat equal value on both sides. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. <laughs> I wish I liked doing it. Brian Brian is a card trading man. He will trade even if he doesn't really need the cards that he's trading for. He just enjoys the process. Um, if I could, I would just have him trade all of my cards for me forever, but it's a pain in the butt. Um, 
So that's my goal today, though, is to get uh, a new shiny dragon planeswalker, and his name is Ugin. So I'm pretty excited to get one of him, because he is a card that you can put into lots of different decks. And in the kind of magic I usually play, which is Commander, uh, it's kind of a universal new card, and it's very fun and cool. So I'm looking forward to my new shiny dragon. But, um, yeah, I don't want to trade. But the person I'm trading them to is very nice. And so I, only, I really only trade with people that are, like, the nicest people, because I hate it so much. Um, but that's my plan. I'm going to do that after work. Uh, now I'm going to go get dressed because I'm in a bathrobe. That's probably not going to work for work. Well, maybe. I, they probably wouldn't say much. But I will talk to you guys all soon. Okay, bye.